Sure. Here I am, Ed. I am here. Thank you.
Well, hello everyone. Good to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. I'm Bradford Becker. Tonight we continue in our 22nd season of Red Barn Radio and we welcome you to show number 829. We're so glad you're with us for this. Touring since 2016 or 2015, Gold Pine has been lessening the gap between music and the audience by disclosing their stories behind the lyrics at every venue along the way. From Kerrville Folk Fest's main stage and 30A Songwriters Festival to listening rooms throughout the United States, Ben and Cassie Smith have been offering their own brand of raw Americana to audiences large and small. Welcome to Red Barn Radio, Gold Pine. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. It's good to be here. I feel, I feel right at home in the barn. Troubles on my mind. I got a river of my wife. You call me up on the telephone, but you only call cause you're all alone. Yeah, I got a few troubles of my own. You say I have you well Good evening, and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau 
More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, formerly known as my one and only, tonight's guests reimagined their southern soul, curious, grit, and emotionally honest lyrics into the Americana act, Gold Pine. Having released their self-produced debut LP, One, last year, they're gearing up to deliver their second full-length record, Two, which actually released less than a week ago. Having been recent winners of the 2022 Rocky Mountain Songwriter Contest, at the Red Lodge Songwriter Festival, Gold Pine continues to stay true to their vision and from the beginning, and they stand out while doing so. Presented the Discovery Award in 2018 by acclaimed music critic Robert Orman of Music Row magazine, the duo's bold harmonies are clearly a channel for their highly charged songwriting. We're glad to have you with us. This is a treat for us. Welcome back, Gold Pine, on Red Barn Radio. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, it's a treat to be here. And uh, you have to hear the story behind this song to truly appreciate this song. So I heard about this contest that a Canadian product was having. And they wanted a songwriter to write a song about what love meant to them because what love meant to this product was all natural, super clean, organic ingredients in their yogurt. And I was like, yes, we can write a love song about yogurt because it paid very well. And we love each other and, and yogurt. And now that I'm 40, I do love probiotics. So anyways, people come to our show and they always ask for this song and they always call it by the wrong name. They always ask for the yogurt song, but it's actually called Naturally. I've been walking with my feet in the air I've been finding something righteous up there It's something that I never knew before Darling, naturally, I'm yours Don't even care if they all understand that I've been flaking out on oh all my, my plans. I hear my baby knocking on my door, darling, naturally, I'm yours. When you look me in the Take my love straight to the bank. Cash it in and fill your love tank. You don't have to go looking anymore, darling. Naturally, I'm yours. When you love me.
skirt. Yes. Still waiting on that endorsement. So, I know that you had mentioned earlier that we um, that we won the 2022 Rocky Mountain Songwriter Fest uh, contest, and this is actually the song that we won that contest with in Montana, and this song is very special to me because it's about my mom, and my mom was sick for about three years, and she was such a fighter. She was short and sassy. She could cook like no other. Good old Alabama girl. And one of the last times she was in the hospital, we went home and we wrote this song for her. And this, I'm, I'm so grateful that she got to hear this song and that I didn't wait too late to write it. But this song is on our new album that just came out. It's called My Favorite Parts of You. It's for my mama. It's about my mom. Yeah. It was Saturday at the Conoco. You were in the back, cutting checks for payroll. I was counting up some play money, pretending I was answering on your phone. We'd lock it up. For the night, said you wouldn't be back till Monday morning light. And on the way, you let me steer while I was on the passenger side. See, I've been watching you, and I've been thinking. It How all the best parts of me are my favorite parts of you. The sound of your screen door closing brings me back to a table overflowing with large elbow mac and cheese, southern boy pinto beans all the pots and pans just to soak in you turned and asked me what i think did i maybe want some unsweet tea to drink you fill my glass up to the top and i go and grab the lemon by the sand I've been watching you And I've been thinking it too How all the best parts of me Are my favorite parts of you the best parts of me are my favorite parts of you all the best parts of me are my favorite parts of you
Well, uh, Cassie and I, we've made several trips to a country called Rwanda, Africa. We've been there seven times now. And we first started going on missions trips over there, and then we started leading trips to Rwanda through that organization. And the last couple times we went, we just went without any organization. We went on our own. We've got a lot of friends over there, and we can get around the country pretty well. But uh, I remember I started writing this song on the three-hour bus ride that we take from the capital city, Kigali, to the city of Yisenyi, Rwanda. And it's a three-hour bus ride through the winding hills of Rwanda, uh, the thousand lush, green, beautiful hills of Rwanda, where you can see all these lines of cultivation up the hills and monkeys and banana trees. And it's one of the most beautiful places. And I started writing this song because I had heard that Rwanda had an unofficial motto. If you talk to anybody in Rwanda, they would they would know this this saying. And it goes like this. It says, God spends his days elsewhere, but he sleeps in Rwanda. And so the chorus on this next song says, he sleeps in Rwanda, but it says it in the native language of Rwanda, which is Ikinyarwanda. So uh, this goes out to our sponsor daughter, Kevine, in Rwanda. This is called Land of Rolling Hills. <laughs> Land of rolling hills Roll over me And put me on the road That leads to Gisenyi Past the weathered feet On their way somewhere For the clouds bring rain To the African air Oh God Spends his day in some other place But each other I'm more wonder You've caused my heart to ache And you laid me in the dust Lured me back a lover who would earn my trust. Still, I'll never understand where all those dirt roads lead. But oh, if we could walk them, then maybe we'd see. Oh, God spends his days in sun.
So that one's also on our new CD. Album, record, all the things. Anybody out there still know what a CD is? <sighs> well, we do. We have a thousand of them. <laughs> we like our own. <laughs> You know, we spend a lot of time, a lot of time on the road. This year, we're going to play over 200 dates. And um, we travel in our van. It's parked out front here. Home is where you park it. And it's usually at your local Walmarts and uh, uh, your gas stations. But we glamorous s it's glamorous. You two can grow up one day and live in a van. <laughs> it's great. No, honestly, it really is. And this next song... It's kind of about missing home, but what is it really about to you, Ben? Where did it kind of start from? Well, let's just say I'm trying to decide which story I should make up for this intro. It's not made up. Oh, yeah, it's not made up. It's true. <laughs> uh, we made our first tour up the East Coast, I don't know, seven years ago. Played in Washington, D.C., New York City, Boston, and Philadelphia. And... Uh, Philadelphia, I will never forget playing Philadelphia <laughs> for the first time because we played at a place called Connie's Rick Rack. And uh, it's like a standing venue. Maybe you can fit 100 people in there, concrete floor, elevated stage. There was three bands on the bill for that night, and we were the first band to play. Five bucks to get in the door. It was one of those deals. And uh, we were the first band to play. We got up on the stage, and... We looked out and to our Philadelphia crowd, and we waved at the two Philadelphia fans that we'd brought out. What's up, guys? <laughs> and then we scanned the rest of the crowd, and the rest of the crowd simply consisted of the members of the other bands we were playing with. <laughs> and so uh, we walked out of that Connie's Rick Rack with a profit of $35. That's right. And uh, promptly... Spent $45 on cheesesteaks about 30 minutes later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally worth so, it. So, you know, at a time like that, you just miss the uh, familiarity of home. This song's about missing home. It's called Running Me. Oh, yeah, uh, every, every word in this song is true. So we could sleep for free Cut a record in a Brooklyn warehouse It was one of a kind But now they're all sold out Ladies showing Philly on our way back We made $35 at Connie's Rick Rack We hit every thrift store in this town Let's pack it all up and head back south I wish that I was up around the bend, somewhere miles ahead, but my mind is back home in ten. in 
Wow, Ben and Cassie Wilson, uh, nice to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. And you guys are doing some singing up there. <laughs> Woo. We're doing our best. Thank wow. You. Yeah, well, I, you know, when I was, I was outside uh, before the program, getting a breath of fresh air before we started up here, and I could hear you all in your van uh, working warming your voices up. and practicing, you know, warming up. You guys take care of your voices, I gather. Yeah, so I had vocal surgery when I was <coughs> 23. I, I developed two cysts in my left vocal cord. Uh -huh. And so I had to have surgery at, in, at Vanderbilt. It was quite the process. And I used to sing completely different and I had to relearn how to speak and relearn how to sing and I was on vocal rest. And if you know me, I'm a talker. So not talking for like two weeks was really hard. Um, Two but weeks, huh? Two weeks at first because you okay. can't put stitches in your throat. Yeah, sure. And so sure. when you wake up from surgery, you cannot speak at all for two weeks. And then a little by little, you can do so many minutes a day. And it was, I mean, I had a, a white board I had to carry around and a pen that said, I'm on vocal rest. And I was like such wow. a loser. Cassie, did you, did you damage your voice by um, not caring for it or by singing improperly or? So yes, all of those. Mm -hmm. I moved to Nashville when I was about, I was 19 years old, I was about to turn 20. And I, just from over usage, I sang so much, so many nights a week, four hours a night. Um, and I used to just like, wanna sing like Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, like Aretha Franklin, all the just wailing songs. And I remember this girl that also sang downtown. She was maybe in her 30s, and I thought she was old. Oh, my gosh. Uh. Anyways, ha, ha. And she was like, you really need to take care of your voice and not be singing like that. And I was like, whatever. What do you know? Yeah, right. And she knew a lot. So I blew it out at 20, yeah, 23. But I will say this. 
after having the surgery, relearning how to speak and sing, my voice is, is completely different. Like, and I love it now. It has so much character. It sounds like I've smoked my entire life, but I never have. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, that's a very long answer for I do take care of my voice. Now I always warm it up, drink a lot of water, and try to sleep um, eight hours a night. But I don't, so somebody asked me last night, they were asking if we had any rituals, do I do anything? But honestly, I probably eat bad food and drink the wrong things. So it's nothing else besides water and rest. Huh. Do you remember when it went out? Yes. <coughs> yes. Were you singing? Yes. Wow. I remember. Wow. I, I remember in the moment, literally, I was singing. It was a remake. <coughs> Jessica, it was a Jessica Simpson song, and she had remade this song. I can't remember. I, I usually can remember. But anyways, I just mm. remember, so say it, if the note was like, who, it would be like, who, who, mm -hmm. who, and I was like, something's wrong. Ooh, right. Yeah, it just would like break. And I still have a break in some places. But I use it to my advantage now. Right. I use it. It doesn't hurt me. Wow. Well, way to go. I mean, that's. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's a that's a big challenge. Yeah. You know, that's when I was 23, and now that I'm 25. Yes. Yeah, right. So, uh, <laughs> hey, Cassie, <laughs> did you grow up in uh, Did you grow up in Alabama? You were singing about your mom I and did. and living down there yeah. and. Northern uh, Alabama. I was born in Coleman and then raised in Somerville. Somerville is very small. When I graduated um, and left and moved to Nashville, I think we had a red light. So we oh, would drive okay. 30 minutes to Walmart, 30 minutes everywhere. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's where I grew up. It's a mm. good place to raise, raise your kids. Yeah, well, there's some nice details in your in your song about your mom. A lot of, you know, uh, a lot of, lot of um, food imagery. She was such uh, a good cook. And, right. And ha did you pick that up from her? Are you also... Uh, Somebody who likes to uh, prepare food? Absolutely not. I love to eat, so I'm 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 very good at that. But I, I don't cook a lick, really. I mean, I can do some air fryer stuff. I can make some pretty good cereal, oh. um, but I don't cook at all. Ben does the cooking, and I know it's such a shame because I that's what well, that's okay. One thing I didn't get from her. Well, that's okay. I mean, one of one of you does, and we I can't mean, be perfect. I would think you know traveling around in uh, a van that that's that's one of the um, things that potentially takes a hit, right, is <laughs> nutrition. Not really. Um, ben, speak to that. Actually, so we've got the <laughs> tour van right outside here. It's, yep. uh, it's basically your full camper van, right? It's got the bed, the <laughs> fridge, the running water. It's, it's everything. And I cook all, uh, we cook almost all our meals in there in an air fryer. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good tool. <laughs> it is. I mean, you can pretty much do anything in an air fryer. And we try to cook, like, ahead of time. So we'll cook a week's worth of food, nice. uh, <laughs> vegetables and chicken. I, I don't cook uh, like a southern person like Cassie grew up. I'm from Iowa. So a uh, pretty plain eater, I would say, meat and vegetables. Lots of corn. And uh, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what we cook. So sometimes we go out to eat, but we're cooking a lot in the van. Mm -hmm. So um, then... Cassie moved to Nashville when she was just out of high school, and you moved to Nashville when? From uh, when did you leave Iowa? <clears throat> I well, I'm from Iowa. I went to Minneapolis, and I interned in a recording studio up there. That was kind of my, I guess that was my plan B. I, I did always want to be a musician artist, uh, but my plan B was audio engineering. So I moved to. Minneapolis and interned in a recording studio and went to one semester of Bible college. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and then I moved to Nashville to go to audio production school. So that's why I moved to Nashville uh, back in 2006. 2006. Yep. Okay. So, mm -hmm. all right. So then, Cassie, at that point, how long had you been in Nashville? In 2006. We can do a little math. It doesn't have to be Five perfect. Years, maybe maybe yeah, okay. yeah, so you don't bit. want me to do math. And how did way. the two of you? How did the two of you end up coming together? So we met at in a suburb of Nashville called Antioch, which is you know not far from downtown, not far from the city, and um, it was at a small startup church that was meeting in the cafeteria of a school. And I was just visiting the church, and Ben was playing <coughs> in the praise and worship. It was him and Brother Leroy, both of them, just two of them mm. up there. And I was just visiting, and I saw him, and I thought he was very cute. And I was like, this is where you're supposed to meet 
your men at church. And so uh, uh, it might be better than the bar. I'd maybe. Yeah, a lot I tried than the bar. that too. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we met there, and he was really shy. And so this is showing my age. I'm not 25. I myspaced him. Yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're all laughing out there. I know. Yeah, right. They don't know what MySpace is. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no, we all know. <laughs> yeah, we all know. Wow. So that's how you, that's how it, it happened. And how soon after you, uh, the two of you met, did you actually start experimenting together with your voices and and starting to to put some songs together? We didn't really do a lot of musical stuff together at the beginning. I would say. Like you were doing your own, Cassie was doing her own country, uh, um, Aretha Franklin career. country. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah so country, she wanted soul. To be a country, country soul. Country soul. And I was in audio production, uh, even though I did play guitar and whatnot. So you know, rarely like when you would have a songwriter around or something, <coughs> I would play guitar for her sometimes when we were dating. Yeah, but you started producing me. That's true. Yeah. So eventually, I did produce and engineer a couple of her solo albums mm -hmm. yeah we didn't but become a duo until like seven yeah, yeah. eight years ago so the whole like working together like in this way mm -hmm. it was a s it was a slow process yeah yeah and, and how yeah. long have you been married 14, 14 years wow that's mm -hmm. a good long time yeah all right way to go thanks well ben wilson it's your lucky day because it just so happens that red barn radio is looking for someone with your uh, expertise <laughs> uh so <laughs> So now you can move to Lexington if you want to. I love it. Uh, no, uh, so this traveling, it's, it, sounds, uh, it sounds wonderful and romantic, and it sounds to me like the two of you are just uh, loving what you're doing. Um, sounds like there's a lot of uh, purpose behind what you're doing. Do you also play, in addition to playing, um, you know, at, at um, you know, people's parties and at bars and so forth, do you also play in churches? So we used to, well, you know, I, you, she mentioned we met because I was playing the praise and worship. Yes. Um, we did lead praise and worship at a church in Nashville for about five years, a small church there. And then after that, we didn't really play regularly at f for any <coughs> churches. But sometimes we, here and there we would play um, like the praise and worship for a conference for an organization that Cassie's brother works for. Uh, which is a Christian drug and alcohol rehab program called Adult and Teen Challenge. Oh, terrific. And so they would have yearly conferences where they would bring someone in to do mm -hmm. some praise and worship music, and we have done that uh, several years in a row. Wow. And then, um, boy, I really, I, there's so much to talk about. I want to talk more about your, your time in Rwanda, but I think we'll come back to that sure, we'll um, to. Second, second time around. Um, could both of you... Uh, so both of you came to this, to this uh, partnership, music, musical partnership, as people who uh, could harmonize. Um, true? Did you learn to harmonize mm -hmm. together? I, th I would have to say that I learned to harmonize. I've always been a lead vocalist. Right. And I mean, I remember being a little girl and trying to harmonize to the radio. Like I said, trying. Um, but it never, it has never come natural for me. And so it's something that I've always had to work at. Um, and still? so, um, Are yeah, yes. Yeah. Still, I can't just do it like most people can, or like, I don't know, or for, if we've been touring with some other, we've been opening for a guy and we, we were supposed to get up and sing a song with him. Well, I had to like practice a lot because it's not something that comes natural. So I wish that I could say that I have that gift, but I don't. You huh. do. Uh, well, I didn't ever have any experience with it at the time that we started singing together. I, I didn't sing harmony for anybody ever before that. Uh, so I, I learned too. I think it just comes, comes a little more natural to me than it does to Cassie. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, what's great, uh, I w what would be great about singing with you, Cassie, is your pitch is right on. And yeah, and uh, nothing a harmonizer wants more than to have somebody <laughs> singing the melody right on and singing it strong. So it's, uh, it's beautiful what you do and your, your stuff um, feels very rehearsed and it's no wonder you're 
together all the time. <laughs> yes. And you have an opportunity to rehearse. We sing these yeah. songs yeah. a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> so do you ever lose, um, do you ever find yourself losing uh, interest in the songs? Uh, that's a funny question. Y there must be times when, um, when you're performing and and you're going, whoa, not again. Yeah, right. Um, For sure. You know, you say you say in your um, in your intro material. I was I was really interested in that. You uh, you talk about um, that point that you wanted to sort of lessen the gap between music and the audience by disclosing the stories. Did you did you get to a point where you felt there there was a there was a growing gap? Where you were, you were singing the stuff that was personal to you, yeah. but you you weren't making that connection with the audience. Is that what you mean? That you you felt like spelling out what is happening in the st the songs would make people more attuned to the lyric? I I don't think that it was something that we felt uh, that we needed to purposely do in, in repair of something. I think it just came natural for both of us to want to make the live show very connecting to the people. You know, anybody can go to Spotify or listen to a CD and listen to any of these songs. Well, a lot of these songs we're playing. Yeah. But the difference in a live show is that, and, and what I look for in live shows, is hearing what happens between the songs. Them talking about a little bit of background story just makes the song come alive to me and I think to most people or even hearing like stage banter between the band on stage or like seeing somebody mess up and like drop a drumstick in the back. I just, yeah. you, you don't get that stuff on Spotify. The live show is right. is where we sh uh, shine in that area, I think, so. Yeah, you hear voices and instruments, uh, you know, when you're listening on uh, you know, different platforms and, and, you know, with this experience, we're listening to human beings yeah, who yeah. happen to have yeah, sing and play. it makes a big difference. Yeah, right. Well, it's great to have this uh, conversation, and I think we ought to get back to some music. So let's, uh, let's have some more music from these guys. We have Cassie Wilson and Benjamin Wilson here. They are, oh, wow. I, I'm sorry, I just absolutely, um, <laughs> I just absolutely spit, I flipped on your name, Pine. <laughs> gold, yeah, you well, flipped gold, it. Gold pine. Gold pine. You're about to call us pine gold. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back, pine gold. What are we gonna do with you? What are we gonna do with you? <laughs> this happens all the Casey time. Casey and pine gold. Oh gosh. <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> we were uh, talking earlier because Brad was proud that he knew our name, and so I think. <laughs> That's what happens when you're proud of yourself. That's right. You Pride butcher it. You're proud of yourself when you should be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's a great song line right there. I like that. <laughs> write that down. Write that down. We'll, uh, we'll do our latest single off the new album that just came out. Uh, it's, the album is entitled Two because it's our second album under Gold Pine. <laughs> And uh, in this song, I would say we uh, explore the definition or maybe the redefinition of the word love uh, and how we use it in our culture. We use it in so many different ways. And I have found in my life when I say that I love something, uh, many times it just comes back to the way that it makes me feel like me, 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 you know? <laughs> How does it make me feel? And I'll, we're exploring in this song what, it would, what would happen if um, love was defined as for the benefit of the other person. So this is called Thinking About Love. I miss you I miss you I wanted to say that I really cared But in 
Instead, I just meant I'd be sad with no one there. I used to think that I. So that's our new single, our latest single that just came out. So about two years ago, we changed our band name. And I feel like I've had an eyelash in my eye for like the entire show. And I just feel like I'm just I'm just winking at y'all like a million times. So for you listeners out there, I'm winking at you. Uh, so we used to be called by a, a different band name two years ago. And why do we change our name? I don't know. I guess because we just like to make things difficult for ourselves. But so we had two albums out under our first band name, which was My One and Only. And we liked that band so much that now we covered their songs. So this is one of their songs from one of their first records. It's called The Straight Line. Straight Line. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> You smile and 
Well, uh, last year we were doing an artist in residency program in a county in Kansas called Marshall County. And uh, it was a very mean, one of the most meaningful musical experiences we've had. We spent three weeks in this county and went to the towns in this county and did all sorts of musical events, which obviously included like concerts in their opera hall and. Um, we were able to even go into high school and middle school classes so and scary. So scary. and uh, teach uh, music and teach in uh, entrepreneurship classes and share about uh, our music and our business. Uh, and yes, it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> it was scary. But it was weird to go back to high school after 20, 30 years. It was. And we, we ate lunch one time in the cafeteria just like we were back in high school. I mean, it was just... Yeah, the craziest then, experience. And then after you got your tray, you were like, oh, where do I sit? <laughs> I, do, oh, yeah. I want to be a cool kid. You brought me right back. But yeah. then all these kids just ran up to us, and they're like, sit with us. And I was like, oh, we're cool. <laughs> so it was scary going Same into food. the schools. Uh, but they proved me and my fear wrong. Mm -hmm. They loved it, and they gravitated towards our music. 
and we loved them and sharing experiences with them and connecting with them over uh, what we do and following dreams and entrepreneurship. It yeah. was the coolest experiences. It was. Yeah. Um, during that three-week residency program, we it happened to be Valentine's Day, and you know we tour all the time, and it's hard to do normal things when you're touring. Like you're not just like we're we're together a lot, and so it's hard for me to go and get a gift or a card or and stuff like that because we're just always together you know sounds like excuses to me yeah. <laughs> sure does so i was unprepared on this valentine's day and uh Ca i was at the hotel cassie was at a thrift store in <laughs> waterville kansas That's right and i pulled out a sheet of paper and i started making a homemade card and i've made a lot of homemade cards in my life um i like that idea better than paying like 10 bucks for a card from walgreens or walmart so I make a card, and it's personal, you know? So I'm, I'm making a card. I'm thinking about what kind of things I can say on this card. And I thought about stuff like, I love you in Marshall County, Kansas. Mm. Good. So good. Yeah. And I love you in Dallas, Texas. And uh, I love you on the Gulf of Mexico. And so, um, you know, I couldn't name all the places, so I just named a few places that I, that I loved, Cassie. And uh, I gave that card to her, and she... She loved it. It was a hit. It was a hit. But we thought later, this idea is pretty cool. We should uh, maybe see if we can turn this into a song. So what started as a homemade Valentine's Day card is now etched into plastic on 200 vinyl records, which are all sold out now, so now they're in people's houses. Uh, this song's for Cassie. It's called About My Baby. I'm the baby, if you guys are wondering. down in San Antonio and on the Gulf of Mexico in the markets of Santa Fe and on the peaks of Colorado I love him in Sedona sand stars from the top of the van with a cow mariachi band out there on the federal land. There ain't no other way to say. There ain't no other way to say the way I feel. Size bed, burning by the TV light in the middle of a motel mess. I love her by the light of the stairs and the way she knows everyone's name. I love her when she shows out. I love her when she hides away.
my baby here and there well, I think I love her everywhere well we've got lots more music and conversation with Ben and Cassie Wilson Goldpine but I'd like to take a moment to remind listeners that Red Barn live streams both tonight's and on any Wednesday remain available online for you to view at your convenience along with our audio stream compliments of WGAD.net in central New York. Don't miss one episode of our program, not a single one. Be sure to tell your friends and share what it is that you like about Red Barn Radio. Let me take a couple of moments here to tell you about our next program with Shannon Clark and the Sugar. Hailing from rustic Dark County, Ohio, this family band writes and performs their original music about personal loss, struggles, and the human condition. Husband and wife duo Shannon and Brittany Clark joined uh, the Warped Tour, get this, to represent Ohio in the mid-2000s, um, soon after tragedy uh, hit their family with the loss of their second daughter. And for a time, music shut down for them. Imminently, uh, Shannon and Brittany's creative songwriting would become the healing tool that brought them together and revived the band. And then with their oldest daughter, Navy, uh, who joined in 2019 as a vocalist and instrumentalist, they began experimenting with a new sound, which, began, which became Shannon Clark and The Sugar. These are some really great and uh, talented folks. We're happy to have them back on Red Barn Radio. If you missed them a couple years ago, don't miss them this time. Shannon Clark and the Sugar, that's all next week in studio and on Red Barn Radio's live stream, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. Now let's get back to tonight's program. Red Barn Radio um, welcomes you live on our social media platforms, broadcasting from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the city of Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome back, Ben and Cassie Wilson, Gold Pine. There's one song that we recorded on our first album that uh, we did not write, and this is that tune. I love this tune. Uh, we'll see if any of you out there listening know who originally wrote and uh, recorded this tune. This is Gold Pine's version. I still miss someone And my door, the leaves are falling A cold, wild wind will come Sweethearts walk by together and I still miss someone I go out on a party And look for a little fun But I find a dark
Any guesses out there? Who? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. We have a winner. Well done. Where you can have the yeah, shirt over there. Yep. Lots of people don't know. Lots of people will often say like someone that's redid the song, like Linda Rodstedt. And then a lot of people will say Brandy Carlisle. And I'm like, no. Uh -huh. No. Nice job. Well, uh, I grew up in the great state of Iowa, and uh, I graduated high school in Oskaloosa, Iowa. That's southeast Iowa. <coughs> and uh, my whole family lives in Iowa right now. I got two brothers and my parents and some nieces uh, and nephew. My dad's been a golf professional all my life, and so I grew up playing golf. And uh, Cassie and I have the golf clubs out in the van right now, just across yeah. the street, you know. We'll stop on tour and look for the cheapest, cheapest crappiest, crappiest golf course. <laughs> we played the other day for $1 per hole. That's the cheapest we've ever gotten. Including a cart. I don't know if any of you golf, but to play 18 holes for eight, oh, actually it was less. It was $11 for 18 holes per person <laughs> with a cart <laughs> yeah it was can nuts. you believe that that is the cheapest course i've ever played and it was a lot of fun honestly in virginia right <coughs> i can't remember where it was it was in virginia it was great we really liked that <laughs> so anyway uh yeah i grew up playing golf and but my mom's side of the family like her dad was was a farmer uh at one time and his dad was a farmer and the they had a, the family farm, and it was handed down to my grandfather back in the early 60s. And it didn't take long for my grandfather to realize that he just simply hated farming. And uh, so in the early 60s, uh, <clears throat> I think a few years after he acquired that family farm, he put it up for sale and moved to Omaha, Nebraska to be an electrician. And my mom was... Uh, a child at the time and a few years back my mom sent all of us uh, all of her kids a copy of that farm for sale sign that my grandfather made back in the 60s when he sold that farm and it's hanging in our kitchen in Nashville mm -hmm. it's got all sorts of cool things written on it like how many head of good cattle and good sheep were for sale and the exact driving directions to this farm sale in rural Iowa <laughs> and Cassie and I were sitting down to write a song and we thought we would write a song from my mother's perspective uh, I guess on a deeper level this song's about the the weight of the responsibility of, of making a, a decision that just doesn't affect you but it affects others around you um, inadvertently whether they like it or not this one's called Lost and Found. <coughs> it was 1961. I was staring out into those snow white fields. That December cold was seeping through the cracks of window seals. I can still feel the calloused hands that brought this child upon this very land. And, and I, I can, can hear the hum of harvesters every time I think of my granddad. My father never asked for this, but generations said it was his lot. So from morning sunny till the fields, 
But to call himself a farmer, he would not. That winter eve, I looked out as he drove that for sale sign in the ground. And as I stood there watching him, my tears that fell down didn't make a sound. Sometimes when something is lost There's someone else it's found I can understand how To sacrifice yourself for someone else But this life is made a season And some of them don't really suit us well We sold that farm in the Midwest and settled down in northern Omaha. Daddy picked up steel-toed boots and never put his hand back on the plow. But sometimes when something is lost, for someone else it's found father learned the weight of laying down to rest his youngest son and someday I will give my brother's name to one of my own children I saw Jesus on the city bus and I told him I was alright for now I had plans for the next few years, but we both knew that I was nowhere bound. Well, sometimes when something is lost, for someone else it's found. Here's another song that we really liked from the band My One and Only. So, we, uh, that band that we like to cover. Yep. I did have the idea that maybe we should go on tour and we could remember like Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus. So, we could like open for Gold Pine as My One and Only and then go change clothes and come out as. Yes. Just an idea. I like it. Kay. Double the money. Double the money. <gasps> or no money. I don't know. They might take away from us. Change. I have learned from my 
See what took so long to see. Well, the truth will set you That was a neat tune. That really uh, showcased uh, what you do on the guitar there, Ben. Yeah, very nice. And uh, that that's an interesting instrument. With the What's with the sound hole on the top? <laughs> Talk about yeah. that a little bit. Show the camera. Yeah, so this is Gibson's new, newer model. It's the, what? I believe it's the G45. And I think it's the first model that Gibson has ever put a sound hole here. Uh, you know, Gibson doesn't like to put pickups or anything in there. They just want to mm -hmm. have a jack there and just a natural guitar. But uh, this is kind of, I guess, <laughs> they say so you can hear it better while you're playing. And I don't know. I just like the sound of the guitar. It just really it projects. So maybe there is something to the hole. Well, I don't know. I mean, you 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 bought it. You I mean, I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Huh. Yeah. You you bought it, or you literally bought it, like. Whatever they were I bought yeah, it. Right. Or I bought it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, maybe I meant I meant the yeah the, yeah. the dollar one. <laughs> I love it. Um, hey, uh, first of all, I, I'm, this conversation is going to take a whole turn. We're going to talk about golf the rest of the <laughs> program. I, I know a lot about golf. I think I, I'm sure you do. So your father was a, a professional golf. Is a professional golfer. He's a professional golfer. He's oh, been uh, a pro at a course ever since I've been alive. Okay, so before, so he had his career was his, by the time you become a pro at a club, have you sort of wrapped up your own career? Uh, well, when you become a pro at a, at a club, is that, is, it, is that something you do uh, after you've already had a career of your own? Or do you go like as a pro or are you just a teacher? I see what you're at saying. That point? So he has been a uh, pro at a club. <laughs> Well, since he was a pro, yeah. He's been on a few um, tours, like uh, parts of the Nike tour and some senior tour, uh, but mainly he's teaching at uh, golf courses. You know, every, every golf course has a pro, there's yeah. a teaching pro there and runs the course and everything. And so that's what he does. And he really loves teaching. He loves teaching golf and he's really 
great at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cassie can attest to that. Yeah. Because she, uh, she recently, well, in the last four or five years, uh, just started playing, and, and Dad, Dad taught her. So. Yeah, and I'm basically a pro now. So. Well, yeah, <laughs> basically. Right. And not yeah. pro noun. I'm a right. pro now. <laughs> no, I remember, like, straight up, I remember, so his dad's a golf pro, his brother's a golf pro, his mom is really good at golf. And so we have been, we were together, shoot, we've been together 16 and a half years, and they always were trying to get me to golf, and I was like, no, I'm good. I would just ride in the golf cart with our Chihuahua Jackson, and I would just ride around and be like, this is so boring. I hate it. I want to go shopping. But anyways, um, <laughs> maybe four or five years ago, finally, they just kept on and kept on, and they said, just just get out here. And I was like, okay. So I jumped off the cart, and I was like, I'll try it. And his dad like jumps off, and he's like, okay, put your shoulders in this way. Do this, put this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Now swing it. And I, sw- I swing it, and I was like, and I was hooked ever since. Yeah, it right. It went far and straight, and it was great. And so it's not like that every time. Wow. I, I mean, you just don't think of, um, you know, kids of pro golfers going the, the arts route. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my brother, when, he, when I was about 12, my brother had our grandpa's Sears acoustic guitar. Uh, a silver tone guitar that you bought at Sears. I don't know if you remember those or not. Oh, yeah. And um, he played like a few chords, and he taught me a, a chord. My brother did. And that's where the whole thing started. He doesn't play anymore, and nobody else in my family plays an instrument or sings. Uh, but that's where it started, just teaching me that one chord. And I don't know, I was, I was hooked on, on music at that, at that point. It's kind of like me with golf. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you with golf. Lose respect for Phil Mickelson going the uh, live uh, with the live. I don't train. know enough about it to make oh, okay. a judgment. All right, sorry. I just I, we don't usually <laughs> I've talk just heard politics the news, on here, so. but yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about Rwanda. Uh, would love to know. I mean, so when I when I think of um, y- you know the year that we moved, it was it was the year that we moved to Kentucky that the Rwanda, uh, you know massacre though yeah. in the mm. Hutu militia killed everybody and that's you know that was that I remember that when we moved here do you all um, did you find your work there was was a response in some ways to uh, the hardship of that particular country and what they've been through in their history or how is it that you happen to end up in Rwanda of all places well, Cassie actually took the first trip to Rwanda without me. Um, so maybe you want to say how that happened. Well, for me, like, every, like when I was a little girl, like my dream vacation was to go to Africa. Like I remember that I, ha- I had a pen pal. I don't know if they made y'all do that in school, but I had a pen pal that lived in Kenya. And I just remember always seeing pictures and everything, and I was like, one day, one day I want to go to Africa. That's all I want to do. And then when you would, like, fill out applications or any kind of questionnaires, and it's like, where is your dream vacation? I would always say Africa. So <laughs> then this opportunity brought it, came forth, and it was um, – Ben was running sound at the listening room in Nashville, and um, – the owner's girlfriend came in and was talking to Ben about this organization called at that time visiting orphans. And he, she was on the, she was part of the staff and she said, I'm taking a team over, but it's a music mission trip. And we're taking like, um, music leaders, music pastors, um, and stuff like that. And Ben was like, well, I think that's something my wife would really be interested in. So I was the only artist that went and it was amazing. So that's initially how we got there. Now, keep in mind, as a little girl, I wanted to go on vacation in Africa and my, probably like South Africa. So uh, this is a completely uh-huh. different thing. And I knew and I knew what I was getting into and I wanted to be a part of it. But it's funny how like God puts that desire in your heart as a child as something for you. And then all these years later, I end up going, but not for the reason that I initially wanted to go. So I think it's pretty cool how it was planted, and then it finally got to happen. And since then, we've been 
seven times. Wow, that's that's amazing. So you know, 60 Minutes did the, did that sort of seminal piece about how when we pulled out of Afghanistan, how yeah. uh, they shut down all the girls' schools there, and and how the one in Rwanda started the Solash School. Do you all know about that school, or have you been there? Or? I don't know. About I don't know about yeah, that Yeah, school one. for girls uh, in. Um, <laughs> I wish I could remember. I think it was the city. The, I think it is the capital city. Yeah. Where it is. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I was wondering, yeah, if you all had um, had had seen that school. Uh, we haven't been yeah. to that school. Um, S O L A. But there were particular. We did visit s some schools there, but we always visited the same places every time we would go. Mm -hmm. And that was one cool thing about uh, these trips is that we were able to. S <coughs> it focused on orphanages. Um, mm. And so we were able to see the same kids like every year and at least somewhat build a relationship with these kids. I mean, we're still in contact with a yeah. lot of these kids and we sponsor one. And that sponsorship program ended up for that particular orphanage that I'm talking about, ended up getting all the kids mm -hmm. in that orphanage sponsored. So 300 kids uh, got sponsored to go to private boarding school and <laughs> it's just amazing what, how someone with an idea of, oh, there's no sponsorship program here at this orphanage, I'm gonna create one. That's yeah. what a couple did, just like us. And 300 kids are sponsored and have a huge, chan huge chance at a successful life now compared to what they, what they would have had. Yeah. So I love it when people play do their roles in life. Everybody has a different role, you know? And those people played their role, and it's a beautiful thing when that stuff happens. Mm. Mm -hmm. And do you see your, your role as musicians, as artists, is it, uh, is, it, is it a mission for you all, in part, when you travel? So, uh, you know, when, yeah. you, when you go to, when you go to <coughs> places like, uh, you know, the Green Lantern in Lexington or Red Barn Radio, are you thinking about, you, do you wanna have um, that kind of an impact on, on people when you sing? I would say that our, for me, our music, or music in itself has always been something where I felt like I wanted to say something to somebody. I felt like I wanted to impart something to somebody or it always interested me to help somebody think in a way that maybe they had not thought of before mm -hmm. um, or to connect with somebody in a certain way that is important beyond just the live show that they're seeing. And so we talked earlier about connecting with an audience. Um, <coughs> if we were just up here playing songs and it was like about sitting on a tailgate and drinking a beer or something like that, I would just might as well do another career. I just wouldn't do it. I, music, f just for music's sake, is just not enough for me. There's something mm. about art that is powerful beyond just the art itself. It lasts. And so uh, I guess that's how I would answer that question. Is yeah. that answer it yeah, at well all Yeah, for well, yeah, I guess I, you know, what I know is your, 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 songs, your songs don't have what I would call sort of Christian content. But uh, but your your beliefs and your convictions really come across very strongly in the songs that you write and the stories that you tell. Yeah, I and mean, uh, and that's that's the way that we live life. If we deem something if that something is important in our lives, it's going to come out in our conversations with friends or uh, in our work or in our art. And um, I think that is naturally what is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful stuff, and I really enjoyed talking to both of you, and I'm glad we have some more music before you look and or before you leave, and I, I look <laughs> forward to uh, talking to you some more after the show. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Welcome back, Gold Pine, folks. Ben Wilson and Cassie Wilson. <laughs> Well, this was the first single off of our first album, One, and it's called Wander Away. By the way, you can get all of these songs on any streaming platform and keep up with us at goldpinemusic.com. 
and hopefully we'll see you at a show on the road sometime because yeah. we play enough of them. So here's Wander Away. You could wander away And build yourself some time Get a monkey off your back Leave the sorrow on the side You could speak your mind When your world is given out Tell them how you feel Say it all out loud. Ooh. You could give some love. It, it will always be enough. When you got. trouble was fix them on a thing far more Well, I was at church in Nashville a few years back, and our pastor said something um, that I thought was pretty mind-blowing. Okay. His drum is trying to escape. Yeah. He said, um, <coughs> if I were a bird, I would look through the scarecrow, and that's the place that I would go. Because I know that wherever the scarecrow is, that is where there is all sorts of abundance. The only reason a scarecrow would ever be in a place is because it's scaring you away from the good things that are there. <coughs> so uh, this one's called the scarecrow. If I were a bird, I'd look for the scarecrow. There were never other birds there, and I would know. There's nuts and seed and crops to eat. Why else would there be a scarecrow? I used to think he was a real enemy But now he looks just like gathered hay 
to me arms out wide day and night he's nothing like I thought that he say fear comes from the outside but honestly it was buried deep inside of me somewhere out of sight if I could go back I would give myself to love there are never any regrets there because to love someone is what we're made of. That's why we can never get enough. I used to think the only thing it brought was greed. But I was just afraid of what I imagined it to be. Its arms are wide, spring of love. If only I knew love could set me free. They all say fear comes from the outside but honestly it was buried deep inside of me somewhere out of sight Would there be a scarecrow? Well, like we said earlier, we're full time musicians. We travel all over the US and Africa. And a year ago in August, we were on tour in Colorado. And I woke up one morning in the van, and I could not sit up out of bed. And I knew something was wrong, and so I went to the doctor right away. I have never experienced the pain I was going through, and it, it was just weird that I couldn't sit up out of bed. So unfortunately, I was misdiagnosed twice, and I just kept pushing through because we still had two weeks left of our tour and we got home in Nashville in September so it's almost been a year and the pain came back it would come and go so I went to the doctor again but this time my doctor ended up doing more tests and they ended up finding a nine inch six pound tumor in my left ovary and honestly you never think something like that is going to happen to you and it was really scary, it was so big. Um, I asked the doctor to take a picture of it. So I have a picture of it on my phone if you wanna see it. It's very beautiful. You listening, you can't see it. But if you wanna see it, I'll show it to you. So anyways, it was super rapid growing fast and I had to get it out pretty quickly. So I had to have surgery. While I was in surgery, they did a biopsy and it came back borderline. So they also did a full hysterectomy. So basically, you know, it's kind of like when you go to Ikea and you buy that table. Then you come home, you put it together, and there's all these parts that you didn't even need. Well, that's what happened to me. Who knew that I didn't need all those parts? And uh, I'm happy to say 
I had the surgery. There's no cancer. I go back every three months and see my surgeon. I'm doing really well. But I have to tell you the story because as we were walking back or they were rolling me back in my in my hospital bed to have the surgery, all of the nurses, the doctors, the anesthesiologists, everybody came out and they were playing our music on their phone. And they were dancing and I was like, you know, that's really cool. I could die, but probably gonna get a couple new fans on the way out. And uh, follow me, tag me on Instagram, tag my tumor. Uh, but anyways, they were playing this song and I go, wait a second, can you please skip this song? And they were like, why? It's so fun. And I was like, I, you cannot make this up. They were playing this song as I was rolling back to find out if I had cancer. It's called, When I Get to Heaven. When I get to heaven I'm gonna climb the tallest tree I'm gonna stand upon the cloud Just so I can see I'm gonna lay my head down Right on top of your chest I'm gonna sleep for five days straight I won't be worth nothing else When I get to Shall I be in no rush? I'll be leaning them on the table. Well, there are many people to thank for our program. First, Gold Pine, our guest this evening. We're ever grateful for our volunteers and staff who make our program.
production happen each and every week. We want to thank all of you for listening to our webcast, watching us on social media, and of course those of you listening to us on the network of Red Barn stations and media worldwide. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn's premier radio partner, Central and Eastern Kentucky's radio news leader. You can listen online at WEKU.org. It's your chance to hear more great live music from Red Barn Radio and WEKU. That's NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Those of you here in the Central Kentucky area, be sure to check out Red Barn TV. It's our weekly program of music, now on ABC 36 WTVQ. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program. We're on the web at redbarnradio.com. Before we close out tonight's program, let's bring back Gold Pine to do one more tune. You want to tell us about this one? Thank you for having us. It's yeah. an honor to be here. It's great having you. It's very cool. Well, we're going to leave everybody on this note. This is a song that we tend to end a lot of our sets on, and it's a, a song we've never recorded. It's never been on an album but we, we've sang it for many years, and it's, it's a hymn of sorts that we wrote called The Stumbling Stone. And um, I guess this is kind of, kind of explores a little bit of my journey in discovering the power and, and the grace and love of God. So this is called The Stumbling Stone. silence when they behold their king they behold their king great show 
Well, that's all for our show for this week, folks. You can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide as we stream live on the web on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. You can also listen to archived performances on Patreon, Spotify, iTunes, and many more platforms. Remember, folks, every like, comment, share, and subscribe helps bring Roots Music Southern Style to your neck of the woods. And finally this, if any of our featured performers are performing in your area, get out and hear them live. They need you now more than ever. From all of us here at Red Barn Radio to all of our friends worldwide, keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night from Red Barn Radio.